E.L. Doctorow is one of America's preeminent novelists, the author of classics like The Book of Daniel and Ragtime that have explored America's historical past and mythic preoccupations. Doctorow visited The Times recently, and he and I talked about his sources of inspiration and about his newest novel, Homer and Langley, which is rooted in memories of the New York City of E.L. Doctorow's childhood. When I was a boy, these two recluses uh, died in their uh, heavily stuffed house on Fifth Avenue. And it was big news that they had been so eccentric and had collected piles and piles of junk all their lives. And the junk was quite extraordinary. Yes. Automobiles and a huge number of everything newspapers. Everything you can imagine, and presumably with some idea that this stuff would be useful someday. <laughs> At any rate, um, the city tore down the house and made a little park there called the Collier's Brother Park. And a few years ago, I read a story in the Times that the neighbors objected to the name Collier Brothers attached to this lovely little park. Because they saw them as disreputable, is that right? Yes, why? they were still disturbing people 50 years after their death. Well, that interested me. And I saw the possibility of dealing with the myths of these men rather than the actual lives of the men. In other words, when someone achieves this kind of mythic identity, uh, uh, sort of established in the, in the popular mind, then there are two existences for them. There's the historical existence and the mythological existence. And in fact, you tell this story in the narrative voice of one of the two brothers, Homer. Yes, Homer. The book begins, I'm Homer the blind brother. And it wasn't possible to write this book until I had that line and it just occurred to me one day. And I said, oh, this is the book. Here we go. When you write a novel like this, very contemplative, very much involved in serious ideas, how many of those ideas emerge as you're writing through the drama, through the narrative, and how many do you enter the project uh, already a, thinking about? Very good question. The answer is none of them occur to you until you are there at that point in the book. You, you work it out as you go along, and after a while, if the work is going well, the book begins to tell you what it wants you to do. It, it begins to make demands. But it all comes out of that first line. So anything that happens is an act of discovery, really. You don't feel possessive about what you're doing. You make these discoveries just the way the reader will. As a matter of fact, you're the instant reader of every line you find yourself writing. <laughs> jo Joyce Carol Oates, in a very admiring review of this novel in The New Yorker, says that E.L. Doctorow is our great chronicler of American myth. Now, you've talked some about myth, but you also write with a real knowledge of history. When does one, when does historical fact become myth? How does it become myth? Well, first of all, I should say that I never began with any such intention as Joyce graciously describes. The, uh, somewhere along the line, my first novel took place in the American West and the Dakota Territory, and the reason I wrote that novel is because I was working for a film company and reading all these terrible Westerns, and I decided I could lie about the West better than these guys were. And, the second book didn't teach me anything, and the third one, uh, the Book of Daniel, uh, made me realize that perhaps as a New York writer, I could not rely on a sense of place the way, for instance, a Midwestern writer would, Sinclair Lewis, or a Western writer could, uh, or so certainly a Southern writer. That, I that idea of building a novel out of your idea of the place. But I had some idea that a period of time could as be as much a constructive principle for a novel as a sense of place. But the, I always think of any book as a kind of creative accident that happens to thrust itself into my mind at a particular time. For instance, this book, um, uh, while I had the idea of the Collier Brothers in my mind for a long, long time, it wasn't until the last year, a year and a half of the Bush-Cheney administration that it occurred to me this was the only book I could write. Why? Fiction is a very mysterious thing. Um, novels, uh, as the late critic Richard Poirier said, are basically imponderable. So I don't like to put two 
specific a, a label on what I'm doing. But the idea of entropy is certainly in this book. It's undeniable. There's some sort of connection to uh, where we were all living a year and a half, two years ago. And how do we seem to be living to you today? Well, I hope we're living a little better or trying to recover our, our identity or our illusions of our uh, noble identity as a country. The last best hope, best hope of mankind and so on. Thanks a lot, E.L. Dr. Rowe.